Let's talk Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin hit 19,000 on Tuesday, November 24th, for the first time in nearly three years. $1,000 shy of touching its high of $20,000 two years ago. Now, Bitcoin, which has gained about 160% this year, fueled by demand for risk on assets amid uh, unprecedented physical and monetary stimulus, hunger for assets perceived as resistant to inflation and expectations that cryptocurrencies would win mainstream acceptance has already gained over 37 percent in november alone well let me start with you alice this morning how are you doing i'm fine thank you come on well oh, sorry we, uh, yeah. we had a conversation with you when it was at seventeen thousand. now we're talking about it when it's at nineteen thousand. would you yeah. well, could you explain that jump why that big jump Okay, um, when we look at uh, what happened, yeah, when let's start uh, early this year, yeah, from yes. February, March, the pandemic came in, yeah, we had lockdowns, we had World Health Organization recommending that people transact virtually, now people avoid, yeah, cash transactions. Yes. So we had innovators in this space quickly jump in and think of solutions of how people can be able to transact um, more efficiently and more effectively in the digital space, yeah, in the crypto space. So we look at the push coming from top, from the innovators, yeah, yes. uh, guys who've already been in the digital space. We had people like Visa, MasterCard partner with some of these cryptocurrency exchanges, yeah, to be able to find solutions of how guys can convert their cryptos into fiat, you know, so that people can also do online transactions very, very easily. Yeah? Yes. So we had this new innovation coming in to be able to solve the challenge that has been uh, caused by the pandemic. Yeah. So what this meant is this meant more opportunities even for institutional investors. Yeah. So we had many, many people rushing in. Yeah. The, there's the fear of missing out, the formal uh, happening where people are like, oh, so this is actually a real thing, yeah? This is actually solving some of the challenges, yeah? We had businesses that are online hearing now, we have huge institutions partnering up with the crypto space, yeah? Uh, accepting, actually, crypto as a mode of payment, yeah? So when we look at uh, sometime in August, around August, September, we actually had the IMF even releasing a video as to how cryptocurrency could be the future of finance yeah because looking at what has happened this year a lot of challenges that were brought up by the pandemic has actually been solved by the crypto space yeah yes so we had many people now with such news we have many institutions coming in we have paypal also coming in and accepting cryptocurrency as one of the mode of payments on their online platform and this is a really really huge uh online uh, financial yeah service platform so so many investors have actually come in, in in place and this leads now to the price jumping up because we actually currently have the uh, scarcity scarcity value in as far as bitcoin is concerned yeah so um we are actually very very positive that this price is actually going to even break the previous high set of 20k and you know even cross over because of now the institutional move and push to drive the industry forward pretty much let me bring in in your way this let me bring in let me bring in you as well come on your bringy sorry now i mean look at what alice is saying it's saying good it looks as if we're going to go beyond that 20k mark do you share the same sentiment and if we get there if we're going to go beyond it are we going to say well 20k will be the new value for bitcoin will be the reference point um, thank you very much, Simba. So I agree with uh, Alice a hundred percent in terms of uh, why yes. uh, uh, Bitcoin has been able to uh, get that rise is uh, the institutional adoption. That is a, a key uh, support that uh, um, we, we are seeing in terms of um, what is happening now to Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies. Yes, that um, th that it it. Uh, institutions are, um, are accepting um, that this is not going anywhere, that they'd rather be in uh, or left out. So um, that's, that's part of the reason, uh, the main reason. Another thing is, uh, just like uh, Alice uh, mentioned, is 
uh, the, the pandemic, uh, what, what has, what, what has um, happened in the past few months, uh, causing um, an adoption in cashless payments. And these cashless payments, part of, part, part of it is in crypto. And the main cryptocurrency, as we know, is, is, is Bitcoin. So um, that is, those are the two main things that are causing the appreciation in price. Um, the other thing um, is in the trading circles, uh, the technicals. Uh, the technicals uh, currently support uh, a bull market. Um, is one of those things that uh, traders look at. Um, it's called a 20 moving average and another uh, 200 uh, moving average, which is um, uh, an average of the price over either 200 days over, or, or over 20 days. And if it does not break that level, uh, probably going down, then that is a support. That that means that it will keep on rising. So we haven't seen those two levels being broken. In as much as uh, um, when it hit 19,500, we had uh, a big pull back down to 16,500, but uh, no, 16,000 around 200, but it went back up. And, and right now, I think it's uh, approaching 19,000 again. And um, uh, what what will happen is that it will test the nineteen thousand five hundred level, yes, and um, and either it, there will be a small pullback or there will be it will shoot through across because if if it does that, then the twenty thousand level will not be um, a, a major uh, area of resistance. So the next level we'll be looking at will be twenty four thousand, and after it gets uh, there, of course, then there's going to be another pullback, and then of course. Uh, like markets move, uh, they don't, don't move in a straight line. So pullbacks and um, and, and the rise, and so uh, that, that's what we are anticipating to happen. Pretty much, Alice and come on. I, I would like to say that I would have wished for us to continue with this conversation this morning, but like I keep on saying, we're waiting, and I'll be calling you every single time that so we can come and talk about this. Let me just quickly jump. Thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us this morning, which is going to make me jump to the last issue. And quickly at that, Gabriel and Tommy who are still with us. Well, gamblers in the country can breathe a sigh of relief after the state's paid to have accounts that have money that has remained unused for three months for them which has now been quashed. Now, the Interior Ministry and uh, had sought the House approval to ask gamblers to show proof of the source of cash before accessing the money, a move that Parliament has rejected. Now, the Interior Ministry has been pushing for this on grounds that criminals can feed their illicit money into their betting wallets, bet a small share of the amount, before cashing out. But the National Assembly on uh, Committee on Sports, Culture and Tourism rejected the proposal, arguing that confiscation of the idle cash remains the role of the unclaimed financial assets also authority over now there's another new proposal saying also that if you bet now with less than a 100 bob you might go to jail for six years all right let's talk about that uh tommy just quickly uh, that is this the interior ministry really also trying to claw back on the betting industry in the country or legitimate claims about how that can be used for money laundering First of all, I would like to thank the National Assembly for finally standing up for the, for the individual Kenyan. The, the, the Jubilee administration is always overreaching when it comes to things. I don't know if it's uh, trying to raise revenue or I, I don't know what's going on behind it. But since it's the Interior Ministry, I would assume that they are trying to find money that has been ill-gotten and, and find a way to prove it. But here is the problem now. For you to put money into a betting account, you have to have a phone number. For you to have a phone number, you have to register with your ID. For you to have an ID, you need to have an ID to have M-Pesa so that you can load your Betica account or whether it's Portpesa or whoever, whoever it is. Uh, so that, that, that issue is not, is, is not hard to trace. Now, if people want to come and get their money back who haven't used it for three months, that's their business. It has nothing to do with the government. And for one thing, the government, the interior ministry needs probable cause before it can act on any such claim or, or sorts. So your guess is as good as mine, whether they are clamping down on the betting industry, which I don't think is the case because they've been narrowed down to only like three companies now. Uh, as far as money laundering is concerned, that is, that, that is something else. That's a whole other story. So I appreciate the National Assembly's effort to push back and let these monies be claimed from that, that department, that unclaimed assets ministry.
pretty much Gabriel 30 seconds if you may sir a case of a legitimate claim or just a case of the government saying we don't need you here man uh, I think it's just the government being the government trying to <laughs> push them because the C that's the CBK's job and the CBK is good at money laundering there is no one better than CBK in clamping down all right Unfortunately, that's exactly what we have prepared for you this morning in terms of our economic review. We apologize for that, sh uh, for that short technical hitch. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyage. Thank you very much for taking your time to stay with us.